Well, that was an interesting post 9-11 viewing experience. So Rambo 3 tells the story of Rambo having to go into Afghanistan, take out Soviet Russians to save his old commander, Troutman. What's up people, continuing on in the Rambo series leading up to Last Blood, which is getting so close, I am so excited. As the previous two reviews, if you have not seen those already, why haven't you seen them? But other than that, Sean Chandler from Sean Chandler Talks About is doing this review series with me. His link will be down below to his review. Much like I said in the Rambo First Blood Part 2 review, Sean grew up with these movies much more than I did. I was always a fan of First Blood, but 2 and this one, Rambo 3, were the ones in the middle that I kind of never had much experience with. I saw them both once over 10 years ago. This is my second viewing experience for Rambo 3 before I do in this review, so he's gonna have more the nostalgia side of things as far as his thoughts and his review. Mine is gonna be much more of kind of a fresh viewing experience from a movie watcher in 2019. So a little bit of different back and forth there, but definitely check out Sean Chandler Talks About down below. Check out his review, like, subscribe, tell him that Cody sent you over there, and enjoy both of those perspectives. Now, with all that being said, Rambo 3 at one point was the most expensive, the biggest movie ever made, which was very quickly taken over by Back to the Future Part 2. So, big sequel, continuing on with the 80s macho, kind of action hero, action-centric type style film that this is. And a lot of my thoughts with Rambo First Blood Part 2 are going to carry over into this one. But starting off with the positives, I will say as far as action sequences, this is possibly the biggest action movie in this entire franchise. We'll see how Last Blood does. Rambo is certainly the goriest, but I think this one has the most and the biggest action set pieces. And for all intents and purposes, the movie almost feels like at least the last half of it is set piece after set piece after set piece after set piece. And it just keeps going and it keeps getting bigger, it keeps getting grander, it keeps getting a little bit more epic, and it's entertaining as hell. If you just like classic 80s macho action, this movie has it in spades. You've got Rambo doing his thing, sneaking into a place and setting traps and taking people out silently. You got this whole deal where Rambo is getting swarmed upon and he's chasing, he's being chased on a horse, he's getting swarmed upon with all of these helicopters launching missiles everywhere. You've got Rambo and Troutman in a cave taking people out silently. The bow and arrow with the explosive arrows comes back. There's a huge action sequence that finishes the film where you've got a tank versus basically this entire Soviet army and a helicopter that has a pretty cool ending. There's a lot of action in this film, so if you're one of the people that likes your Rambo movies to be more action-centric, this one might be the one for you. Second biggest thing that I can say that I enjoy about Rambo 3 is the fact that Troutman actually has a serious place in the plot. You know, he's basically the, the guy in the earpiece in the first two movies. He's the guy they bring in to try to talk Rambo off of the ledge in First Blood. In part two, he's his commander sending him out into this mission. Rambo 3, he gets kidnapped and he's the one that Rambo has to go and save. So you, for the first time, you get action sequences with both of these characters on screen. He's in much more of the movie than he was in the first two. And like I said, it's just a very cool angle to go with, with this great character who's definitely the second biggest character in this franchise, who finally gets to do what Rambo has been doing the past two movies. Kick ass. The one thing that I noticed about Rambo 3 as well that I appreciated is that Rambo seems his most mortal in this movie. You know, there's a pretty popular criticism of First Blood despite that being, in my opinion, one of the greatest action films ever made that with such a grounded take on that storyline and those themes that Rambo seems a little bit invincible in that film, which Never bothered me, but fair enough. Then you get to Rambo First Blood Part 2 and he might as well be a piece of steel on legs. You get to Rambo 3 and there's quite a few sequences where he takes damage. He has shrapnel that goes inside of his rib cage, or inside of his 
abdomen and out the back where he has to blow it up with gunpowder to seal the wound. He gets shot in the leg later on. You really feel like Rambo could die in this movie. He doesn't feel like the impenetrable force that he was in the first two films. And I kind of like that aspect. You still feel like he's going to win. You still feel like he's the badass. He's the one man army against this entire Soviet force. But he's a little bit more mortal and slightly more believable despite it being so larger than life. Now my one mixed aspect with this film is kind of the 80s macho cheese as far as the dialogue and as far as the presentation of the character of Rambo. Where in First Blood Part 2 he still kind of kept that quiet edge to him with the exception of the one microphone scene or I'm coming to get you. This one, he gets another radio scene, I'm your worst nightmare, and he has the whole thing where he's tying up his bow, or tying up his headband, and you see Stallone in his biggest, baddest, muscular form doing that, and just glistening with sweat. You have the whole thing where like he has a little bit more humor in this one, he's got much more one-liners, when you got this whole Soviet army against just him and Troutman, Troutman looks at him, what are you going to do, Johnny? And he goes, fuck him. Like, that's the type of Rambo you get in this. And on one hand, which is why it's mixed, that's fun, that's enjoyable, that's something that you kind of come to expect with this era of action films. And Stallone, just like Arnie, was always great at delivering those types of characters. Where the negative side of it, which brings it into the mixed area, is that, like I said in First Blood Part 2, I don't really necessarily love the macho 80s action hero style Rambo as much as I do the grounded Vietnam PTSD character that he started out to be which is in my opinion much more interesting much more relatable and a character that I'm a little bit more fascinated with versus just badass Stallone with a headband. Now moving on to the negatives and the main one that stood out to me is the desert setting. Now I understand you kind of have to change it up a bit. The first one had an urban setting, second one was set in the jungle, and this one they wanted to switch it up. They wanted to go mostly desert, sand, everything like that. The problem with it is it just makes the movie feel so dead and mute. Like there's not any color whatsoever except tan. It's sand everywhere. There's not a whole lot of cool shit to look at. There's not like a really cool environment that Rambo can kind of use to his hunter advantage like in the first two movies. So while I, I can appreciate going for a different angle and trying to change up the setting a bit, I just don't feel like it did any favors for the enjoyment factor of the film, the, the cinematography, as far as giving it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more kind of breaking up the monotony throughout the film as far as the setting of all these action set pieces. They're all flatland sand. And while I won't get into this much because I know it's a sensitive subject, I will just say, like I joked about in the intro, this movie also is kind of a strange watch in a post 9-11 world because where in the last film where he's going to rescue people, he's rescuing, you know, POWs, which is something that in America we always value and we're especially valuing during that time when that movie came out. You get to this and he's helping out, which for all intents and purposes is like a jihad group in Afghanistan. And knowing how history has went, it's a little bit more awkward of a watch seeing the American symbol of hero kind of going for that angle. You know what I'm saying. I also found the villains to be much less interesting than this one. Now, the second movie was mostly just kind of Viet Cong cannon fodder with the exception of the military, the mercenary leader that tricks Rambo and kind of screws him over who kind of becomes the main adversary, if you will, by the end of the film. This one, it's just this Russian Soviet leader. Of course, you have the classic cliche of, you know, when you have a Russian militia, you have the big bulky guy that he has to fight in the third act. There's really nothing memorable to me about the villains in this film. You could pretty much interchange them with anything and it would be the exact same film. Like there's just not a whole lot of resonance for me with why he's fighting these people other than the fact that just, okay, we'll fight Russians this time. And my final negative, which is probably my biggest negative, but it's also just a carryover from the style that they went for in Rambo First Blood Part Two, is that this movie cranks up the action and once again just cranks down the story. There's not a whole lot of plot here. There's not really a big exploration of themes. There's not a whole lot to grab onto as far as like script, story, plot, any of that stuff that I really love about First Blood and most movies that's what I kind of tend to go for first is story and then it's characters. This one is just 
slam bang action, which is nothing wrong with that. Action movies kick ass and Rambo two and three are definitely some of the more popular ones from this era, but it's still just, I don't know. I have such a love for first blood that two and three just don't quite land for me with what I want from a Rambo film. So I don't know if last blood will rectify that Rambo certainly kind of falls in that camp, but it's also just splatter flesh gore. So that one kind of has its own charm and it's in itself for that one. But cranking down the plot once again and kind of recycling the plot from the last one too. Just Rambo has to go into this place and rescue people, only now it's Troutman and you know the people from Afghanistan. It's Wash, rinse, repeat at this point. So overall, guys, I enjoy Rambo 3. I think that it's cool. It's definitely, like I said, one of the more action-heavy sequels in this franchise. So if that's your thing, this is probably one of your favorites as well. I like the fact that it kind of has a little bit more fun with the Rambo character, but at the same time, it takes away from what I love about the character. So it's just one of those movies where I'm very mixed with how I feel about it. It's entertaining. If I just want slam bang action, if I want just big action set pieces, if I want that 80s macho sense, I can go to Rambo 2 or Rambo 3 and have a great time with it. But like I've said numerous times, I just tend to identify the most and try, tend to hold closest and hold dearest First Blood. And this is just another sequel that gets very far away from what that movie brought. So if you're a fan of 80s action, if you're a fan of Stallone, or if you love the direction they took in Rambo First Blood Part 2, Rambo 3 just takes it up one more notch. So stay tuned and check this thing out online. Stream it. What do you guys think of Rambo 3? Is this your favorite of the franchise? Your least favorite of the franchise? Do you agree with anything I've said? Disagree with all of it? Do you like the desert setting? Do you identify a lot with the plot of this one and kind of teaming up with the jihads and the whole Soviet Russian soldiers that are running around Afghanistan? Or are you like me and you just prefer that grounded take of First Blood and a little bit more of a character study versus the 80s macho sense? What are your thoughts on Rambo 3? Let me know down below and we will talk about it, please. Like and share this video, hit that subscribe button, check the video description below also for Sean Chandler Talks About's review. Go over to his channel, tell him that I sent you there, hit the like button on his video, share that for him as well, and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber to his channel. Please do all that and check down below as well for my links for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my Patreon page, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help this channel grow, and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. Also below that, my Spreadshirt store. So if you like Cody Leach merchandise, if you want to do any of the designs that I have that's been designed by the great Woody Bowen, I've got t-shirts, mugs, bags, stickers, all kinds of cool shit down there. Check that out. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, like all of my previous reviews in the Rambo series, you can check those out by clicking right over here.